Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. Batgirl and the Birds of Prey number three, written by Julian Shauna Benson and art by Claire Rowe. I just... this doesn't really work for me. The way these characters are written, it's so inconsistent. They were initially kind of forced together by circumstance to track down this imposter oracle and stop him, her from selling secrets to the mob, and by extension, sullying Barbara's legacy. This is now three issues in and that is almost completely dropped. Barbara and Dinah act as if they are fully fledged team, and even though A, this was supposed to be temporary, and B, they've been together for what, a week? The art is getting on my nerves too, I suppose it's competent in posing characters, panel layouts and give enough mood, but the faces look constantly distractingly weird. Superwoman number 3, written by Phil Jimenez and art by Emanuela Lupacino. I'm going to be completely honest here and say that I have difficulty paying attention to what's happening in this book. It's paced very strangely, where it jumps scenes forward with little explanation of context. The narration boxes don't really seem to match the scene and the panels they are in. What this book does accomplish is to make Lex Luthor seem sympathetic. Too bad it doesn't do the same thing for the protagonist. Lana Lang says and does things in this book that are just dickish, for lack of a better word. Supergirl number 2, written by Steve Orlando and art by Brian Ching. I don't have a lot to say on this, besides repeating how much this book is taken from the Supergirl TV show. This interpretation of Cat Grant, for example, is the Callista Flockhart version. We get a little bit of characterization from one of Kara's classmates, who are either going to be a future love interest or a future supervillain, because he has a giant chip on his shoulder. A large chunk of this issue is dedicated to Kara dealing with Cyborg Superman and the fact that he pulled an Empire Strikes Back and revealed to her that he is her father. It seems like the series is going to deal a lot with Krypton, or rather, Argus stuff in the future. This series hasn't really grabbed me yet. I, I'm going to give it a few more issues, but I'm not really feeling it so far. Wonder Woman number 8, written by Greg Rucka and art by Bilkis Ivoli. This is a filler issue, but an interesting one. It's all about Cheetah, or rather Barbara Ann Minerva's backstory, and her quest to find proof of the mythical Amazon's existence. There are parts here to really enjoy. There's a distinct Indiana Jones flavor to this story, and I think it's pretty interesting that she's unwittingly guided in her quest by the god Athena. I also thought the ending of the story was really good. Sad, but good. There are also things that I didn't enjoy as much. I thought the theme of overly dickish male authority figures in her life was a cheap shortcut to make her sympathetic. Having one of them being female would not diminish her character or journey, but it would also have avoided a pretty tired trope. A trope that in this day and age becomes more and more political statement than a storytelling device. The Flash, number 8, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Carmine D. Giandimenico. This is the end of the first story arc after Rebirth. While this has been a fairly standard superhero story, I think it pulled it off quite well. There are no real surprises in the way the story is told, but it ties things up in a satisfying way and it holds a few things back to tease upcoming storylines. I do like the fact that if you know old Flash stories, and by that I mean pre-crisis Flash stories, there's a panel here that really suggests that Barry has just killed a person. I feel that this has been somewhat awkwardly paced as an 8 issue arc. It should either have been expanded to show more of the citizens speedsters so that the sacrifice would have been more emotional and have Godspeed as a growing threat in the background or shortened slightly because there are bits and pieces that I feel like padding that could have been cut. It's also increasingly difficult not to question how this Wally West and the old Wally West never met as they were both supposedly partially raised by Iris. Yeah I know it's the speed force. They don't have to explain anything. All-Star Batman number 3, written by Scott Snyder and art by John Romita Jr. The gradual breakdown of Batman continues in this issue. You can really feel how brutal and exhausting this journey with Two-Face is. Batman does get a bit of a breather, hiding out with Duke in a remote Batcave while Two-Face is operated upon by Herald, a character I don't think has been in the comics for over a decade. I really like how desperate this story feels. The stakes are high, the opposition is relentless, and it's really questionable if the goal that Batman seeks is really even possible. Detective Comics number 942, written by Steve Orlando and James Tinian IV and art by Andy McDonald. Yeah, this mini-event has been mostly unimpressive. It suffers from not letting the stakes be high long enough. 
and every problem that is introduced gets solved too quickly and too easily. Hugo Strange's plan is also really dumb. Not only is the motivation for his actions exactly the same as a previous story, but his execution is not very well thought through. The final confrontation is supposedly to be entirely on his terms, but there are so many ways to stop him, it's ridiculous. I also feel that the art doesn't really convey what it needs to, so we need to be told through exposition what happens in some panels. And even knowing that, it's hard to see how that is what happened. Action Comics number 965, written by Dan Jurgis and art by Steven Segovia. Finally, a Lois Lane-centered story. This is what I've been wishing for. Lois getting to be a character and not just a mom presence. Lois has been dreaming of her counterpart on this earth and has found out that she is missing. Or if you've been reading Superwoman, dead. She has received a note from that Lois with a password and conclude that the only course of action is to go to the Daily Planet undercover as herself and try to find out what happened to her. This book is asking all the right questions, but Jurgen's track record on this book is telling me that there's probably not going to be many answers, and that's sad. So that was what I read this week. I feel that I've been kind of down on a lot of books this week, and there was a lot of them in general. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. Uh, that is it for me this week.